Get ready for a whirlwind of creativity. In today's video, we're creating some amazing and unexpected DIY Christmas decorations by upcycling 30 different and common Goodwill thrift store finds. And we're going to do this in under an hour. So if you are looking for some truly unique decorating ideas this year, let's get started. For the first upcycling project, I thrifted this fire screen for $15. To turn it into Christmas decor, I downloaded a variety of nativity images into the Cricut design space. If you don't have a cutting machine, you could replicate this idea using paper or wood cutouts purchased from a craft store. I first cut out the three wise men to fit on one of the side panels. Once I had the design weeded, I used clear contact paper to transfer the vinyl. I applied it to the back side of the fire screen so that I didn't have to work around the metal bars. The vinyl didn't want to stick well to the screen, so later I used my hair dryer to blow warm air over the vinyl so that it would adhere more firmly. Since the vinyl was sticking to the transfer paper more than the screen, I skipped using the transfer paper for the next section and instead I just carefully rolled the vinyl onto the screen. Then for the final section, I cut out the bottom piece of vinyl with scissors to create a hill shape and then I cut out a shepherd on the Cricut machine to place on top of the hill. For this next upcycling project, I used an old mailbox given to me by a friend and I spray painted it dark green. Then to unite a variety of Christmas Village houses, I sprayed them with white primer and then brushed on a coat of white chalk paint. To make the church taller, I hot glued a block of wood inside the mailbox and then hot glued the church to the top of the wood block. I painted the block with white chalk paint to help it blend in. Then I applied spray adhesive to both the church and the wood block and sprinkled on some white glitter. I used hot glue to attach some additional houses and small village figurines, all purchased at the thrift store or Dollar Tree. To make a pond, I glued a silver candle stand to the mailbox lid and painted the lid with two coats of white chalk paint. The candle stand was not as flat as I wanted, so I replaced it with a Dollar Tree mirror that I popped off its handle. To create a snowy effect, I covered the mailbox lid with white caulk, just spreading it around with my fingers. While the caulk was still wet, I covered it with fake snow. To dress up the top of the mailbox, I wired on some pine branches cut from an old Christmas tree that I thrifted and then tied on a big bow. To light up the mailbox, I drilled a small hole in the back and pushed a strand of Dollar Tree battery-operated lights through the hole. To easily switch them on and off, I hot glued the battery box to the back of the mailbox. Be sure to grab old glass salt and pepper shakers when you see them at the thrift store because they make adorable snowmen. Add a little fake snow to your salt shaker and then take one of those snowman head ornaments from Walmart. I don't think the face is very cute on them, so I remove the eyes and nose and use sandpaper to remove the mouth. 
You can also remove the hat if you want and replace it with the salt shaker lid. I do like to reuse the carrot nose, but then I use a paint pen to draw on the eyes and the mouth and I use a pink highlighter to create rosy cheeks. I just hot glued the styrofoam ball to the top of the salt shaker and then I take a small strip of fabric and wrap it around the threads of the jar to create a scarf. Then finish it off with some additional embellishments, maybe a pom-pom for his hat, a snow shovel full of little snowballs, a wreath, or even change out the tiny decorations on his hat. When I spotted this set of vintage Tinker Toys at Goodwill, I knew they would make cute ornaments for a child's tree. To make a Dollar Tree tree a little taller, I took two trees and removed the plastic knob at the bottom of both trees. Then I cut one of the trees in half. Taking that half section, I used pliers at the top to squeeze the pipe closed so that it would fit inside the pipe of the full tree. I added a little super glue inside the pipe of the full tree before pushing in the half section. I cut a bit off of some of the bottom branches to reestablish the cone shape of the tree. Then I took it outside and lightly sprayed it with some white spray paint. I packed the Tinker Toy container with some recycled styrofoam and then inserted the tree into the styrofoam, adding a little hot glue for extra stability. Then I began turning the Tinker Toys themselves into ornaments. First, I inserted hot glue into one of the holes and then inserted a small loop of twine into the hot glue to create a hanger. And then I hot glued various ribbons around the outside of each wood piece. I chose to use ribbon in primary colors to match the Tinker Toy box. There was one large wood ball, and so I covered most of the holes on it with gold stars and put it on the top of the tree. I didn't want to waste the lid, so I drilled a hole in it for hanging purposes, and then I cut up some of the Tinker Toy sticks and hot glued them to the lid in the shape of a star. T to maintain the vintage vibe, I just covered up the styrofoam in the container with a little pillow stuffing. From a distance, I thought this deer plaque might be brass or copper, but it's just plastic. So first I sprayed it with a white primer, and then I brushed on two coats of white chalk paint. When the paint was dry, I distressed it with fine grit sandpaper. I wanted to dress up the plaque by putting it in a thrift store frame, but it was a little too large, so I had to cut the plaque down on my table saw so that it would fit in the frame properly. I added a couple of picture frame braces on the back to hold it in place and added a sawtooth hanger. It really is amazing how much paint can change a thrift store find. This gold lantern stand was intended to hold a taper candle, but I wanted to do something different. So I used pliers to bend the metal parts intended to hold the candle back and forth until they snapped off. And then I gave the stand two coats of black spray paint. 
I put some fake snow in a glass jar that I had previously thrifted. You could buy a small bird's nest or make one like I did by twisting some angel vine into a circle, wiring it in place, and adding some sheet moss and Spanish moss to the middle. I stuck a skewer stick in the bottom of a styrofoam bird and then stuck the stick down through the nest. I added some jingle bells and greenery to the bird's nest, and then I glued the glass jar on the inside of the lantern stand. I wrapped some florist wire around some pine cones to attach them to the lantern, and then used a combination of wire and hot glue to fill in between the pine cones with big pine stems, To give it a snowy effect, I applied some spray adhesive to the greenery and then sprinkled on some fake snow. To finish it off, I added a big bow and some fairy lights in the greenery. I'm calling this metal yard art, but honestly, I don't know what its original purpose was. To freshen it up, I gave it a coat of white spray paint, and then I added some greenery at the top near the bird using florist wire. I also wired on some small pine cones and a bow. Then I applied some spray adhesive to the greenery and pine cones and sprinkled on some fake snow. You could use this stand to hold any number of things, such as Christmas cards, ornaments, or even stockings. When I thrifted this woven placemat, I knew that I was going to try to take it apart. I used a seam ripper to cut through the stitching that held the pieces together. Once I had cut through the initial seams, I was able to pull the rest of the placemat apart by hand, and then I just pulled out all of the loose threads. Next, I rolled up a piece of poster board into a cone shape and then used packing tape to hold the shape in place. I put extra tape around the top of the cone to give it some extra stability, and I cut the bottom of the cone to make it level when standing upright. Then I began adhering the placemat strip, applying a little hot glue to the back of the placemat strip and pulling it tightly around the cone, making sure to slightly overlap each previous strip. As I neared the end of the placemat strip, I trimmed off the bottom of the cone to make it a little shorter. Then I rolled up a small piece of the placemat and stuck it in the hole at the top of the cone and glued it in place to give it a more prominent point. Finally, I stuffed the cone with some packing paper to help it hold its shape. Then I cut a circle of cardboard from a cereal box and hot glued it to the base of the cone. For the next upcycling project, let's use these three glass shades that I thrifted at the Habitat Restore for a dollar each. I added an empty cardboard box to a wooden box that I had previously thrifted. I hot glued three wooden curtain rings to the cardboard box for the glass shades to sit in. Then I added some styrofoam at each end of the box so that it wouldn't move around at all. I began adding pine branches that I had cut off of an old Christmas tree. The cardboard box held the branches just as firmly as styrofoam. Then I cut up a couple different Dollar Tree stems and added those for some variety. I also added a couple Dollar Tree jingle bells and tiny pine cones. Then I filled in any empty spots with pine cones from my yard and finally added a little Spanish moss. 
I made a large bow and wired that to the jingle bells. I also decided to sprinkle on a little fake snow. For a finishing touch, I found an old wood sign and painted it white. And then I printed out an image of a vintage Christmas postcard and decoupaged that to the front of the sign. I ran some black florist wire through the original holes in the sign and attached it to the handle of the wood box. I picked up some wood bookends at Goodwill for a little over $2. I hammered off the teddy bears, which were attached with some pretty long nails. And then I gave the bookends a couple coats of a white primer. When the paint was dry, I distressed the edges with some sandpaper. I measured the back of each book and printed out some vintage children's book covers to fit. To adhere the images, I applied Mod Podge to the back of the bookend and to the back of the paper. I picked up two of these metal votive candle holders at Dollar Tree, and then I printed out some additional children's book covers in sizes to fit the front and sides and roof of the little metal houses. Again, to adhere the images, I applied Mod Podge both to the metal house and to the back of the paper. When the Mod Podge was dry, I cut off any extra paper with scissors or an X-Acto knife. For a little light to shine through the house, I used an X-Acto knife to cut out two of the windows. Then I lightly sanded the edges of the paper with fine grit sandpaper. And then in true Putts House style, I applied spray adhesive to the houses and covered them with iridescent glitter. I hot glued the houses to the bookends, and then I drilled holes to hold some bottle brush trees and also hot glued on some small figurines. I finished up the back of the bookends by sanding the edges of the paper, applying spray adhesive, and then sprinkling on iridescent glitter to match the houses. I previously shared an idea for upcycling glass salt and pepper shakers, and now here's an idea for using the tall, wood shakers. First, I cut one of the shakers down to child size, and then I painted all three with white chalk paint. To create scarves, cut strips off of a thrift store scarf, fold the edges over, and hot glue them in place. You can also use a little piece of pom-pom garland to create earmuffs. I painted a small wood star orange and then cut off the tips with my miter shears to create carrot noses. And then I just use a black paint pen to draw on the eyes and mouth. I use super glue to glue on the nose and the buttons. Then I look around my craft room for tiny things that I can add on as embellishments. This cork frame that I saw at Goodwill was so ugly that it was almost cute, so I was determined to rescue it. I thought the egg carton and stick mushrooms that I made in a previous video would look adorable in this cork frame. I'll be sure to link that video in the description box in case you want to watch the full tutorial. I vacuumed out the dust but I did decide to leave the existing dried flowers and just added my mushrooms to the arrangement. Then I found a rustic Santa ornament in my stash and glued him inside the frame. Then I glued a wooden snowflake to the burlap background and added some berries and greenery to the cork frame. 
so you'll have to let me know, did I rescue it or not? For this next project, I thrifted this odd little drawer and a cracked and broken music box, and I wanted to try combining the two. I just wanted to use the Holy Family figurines, so I used a hammer to break away the ceramic stable. I was mostly successful, but the base of each figurine was pretty jagged, so after I glued them into the drawer, I hot glued moss around the base of the figurines to hide those rough edges. I hadn't originally planned on painting the inside of the drawer, but once the figurines were in place, I decided that I wanted a black background, so I did the best I could to paint around the figurines. Then to fill in the space above the Holy Family, I printed out a vintage image of the lyrics to O Holy Night and cut that down to a small strip. I used Mod Podge to adhere it to the inside of the drawer. In retrospect, I wish I had decoupaged the entire hem to the inside of the drawer before I glued the figurines in place. Then I glued a small plastic star ornament in the center of the drawer. When I saw this floral arrangement, I honestly didn't care for the flowers, but I thought the drum basket had great potential. However, when I started removing all of the flowers, I actually found some very nice greenery that I hadn't originally noticed. I contemplated painting the drum, but then decided to decoupage over the red sides with vintage hymns. I cut several pages from an old hymnal to fit the drum sides. The gold brads on the side of the drum were actually just paper fasteners, so I was able to remove them one at a time as I adhered each hem to the side of the drum. I brushed Mod Podge onto the drum and to the back of the paper and then smoothed it out with my hand and my paintbrush. Then I brushed a coat of Mod Podge over the top of the paper to seal and protect it. I wanted to use the drum upside down, so I needed to paint the bottom, which would now become the top. I used green chalk paint at first, but it wasn't a good color match for the drum's green trim, so I found some dark green acrylic paint and used that for the second coat. Next, I removed the drum handles with wire snips, but the brad holding them in place was not removable. So I brushed on some gold rub and buff so that they would match the other fasteners. I had also thrifted a candle stand consisting of three decorative horns joined together. First, I removed the bracket holding them together and hot glued them into my desired position and then I wrapped some gold-colored florist wire around them. I placed them on top of the drum in the center of a $5 Walmart wreath. I rolled up a few more pages taken from the hymnal, tied them together with lace ribbon, and added those to the arrangement too. Then I filled in around the horns with a few pine cones from my yard. It still seemed like it needed something else, so I added two gold fruit ornaments that I had also purchased at the thrift store. Here's an idea for repurposing an old photo album stand. To begin, remove all of the photo holders. I spray painted the wood first with Zinsser primer and then with a white spray paint. You can distress the edges with sandpaper if you like that look. Then, because the star decal did not want to come off, 
I traded the back wood piece for the front one. I created an image to put on the front, but if you have a Cricut, you could of course create your own decal. I cut out the image and adhered it to the wood by applying Mod Podge both to the wood and to the back of the paper and then smoothing out any wrinkles with my fingers. Once the Mod Podge was dry, I cut off any extra paper along the edges and then used sandpaper to smooth them out. I cut out the holes with an X-Acto knife. Finally, I applied a top coat of Mod Podge to seal and protect the paper. I reassembled the photo album and inserted favorite holiday recipes into the pockets. When I saw this glass base to what was once a hurricane lamp, I thought, how cute would that be filled with fake snow? I rolled up a piece of paper to create a funnel to speed up the process. Then I found a round wood ball in a bag of wood shapes that I had previously purchased at Goodwill. I glued the wood ball over the globe opening and then painted the ball with two coats of white chalk paint. To create a snowman nose, I cut a triangle from a small scrap of balsa wood and glued it to the wood ball with a dab of E6000 glue. I was going to make a stocking hat from a sweater sleeve, but then I found this random hat in my stash that must have come off a jar I used sometime in the past. I used a paint pen to draw on eyes and a mouth, and I used a pink highlighter to draw on rosy cheeks. Then I painted the nose with some orange chalk paint. To give the snowman hat a more rustic appearance, I hot glued a piece of red fabric cut from a thrift store scarf over the green stripes. Then I used another piece cut from the same scarf to create a miniature scarf for the snowman to wear. And for the final embellishments, I added a tiny lantern ornament hot gluing the end of the string under the scarf. And then I added some greenery, some jingle bells, and a small bird to his hat. I wouldn't normally spend over $5 for a thrift store jewelry box, but this one was in great condition and I loved the house shape. To turn it into Christmas decor, I first sprayed it with white zinser primer. The handles were glued on, so I hit them with a hammer to remove them. I returned the drawers to the box, but I put the bottom drawer in upside down. You'll understand why in a minute. I had also thrifted this Christmas children's book for $1. I removed the staples along the spine so I could more easily cut out the pretty colorful illustrations. I chose a picture of Santa's sleigh in the sky for the front of the jewelry box. I applied Mod Podge to the box and to the back of the illustration and carefully adhered it, smoothing out any wrinkles with my fingers. I just left the extra paper along the edges for now and continued to decoupage the illustrations to each side of the jewelry box. Because the sides were taller than the front and the back, I had to cut a small triangular shaped piece from another page to fill the top portion. Once the Mod Podge was dry, I first used a utility knife to cut off any extra paper. Then I went over all the edges with sandpaper to create a more finished looking edge. Not only did I need to cut out the small side drawer openings, but I needed to cut around the two 
front drawers so they would open. The little strip of paper between the drawers tore when I pulled out the bottom drawer, but it was easy to replace and repair with just a bit of Mod Podge. Next, I applied a top protective coat of Mod Podge over all of the paper. To create new knobs for the drawers, first I marked the center of each drawer and then I drilled a small hole. I ran a piece of florist wire through the back of a red jingle bell and then ran the wire through the hole. I ran one end of the wire through a small bead and then twisted the two ends of the wire together. The bead keeps the wire from slipping back through the hole when you pull on the jingle bell. Because I'm using the bottom drawer upside down, I gave it a coat of white chalk paint. And while that dried, I added a little bit of greenery to the small side drawers, just sticking it into the cushioned ring holders. I also hot glued a small nutcracker ornament in one drawer and a small bird in the other. These little ornaments actually reflect the illustrations decoupaged to the drawer fronts. To create a snowy surface on the drawer bottom, I brushed on some Mod Podge and then spread some cornstarch on top. I chose cornstarch because I wanted something thin and not very messy in case someone ever wanted to flip the drawer right side up. I sealed the cornstarch with spray Mod Podge. Once dry, I set a few embellishments on top, including a Dollar Tree sleigh ornament and a thrifted Santa ornament. Santa was missing part of one hand, but I hot glued a tiny wreath to it, and now you can't tell it's broken. As a final embellishment, I cut out some typography from the book and decoupaged it to the roof. I didn't want to waste the remaining book pages, so I decided to use them inside this drawer organizer that I thrifted for $2.64. To make it easy, I lined up each page with one of the boxes and used a pencil to mark where to cut. I used my paper cutter to make sure that I cut straight lines. Then I applied glue stick to the back of the pictures and adhered them in the appropriate boxes. I tried to arrange the pictures that I had in an order to tell the story of A Visit from St. Nicholas. You may have noticed that I don't always do things in the most logical order, and that's because I'm occasionally figuring things out as I go along. So after adhering the pictures, I decided to repaint the box. I just thought the paint needed to be freshened up and I used a coat of blue acrylic paint. Now this drawer organizer is a cute way to display some small Christmas decor or ornaments. I found some miniature items in my stash that I thought reflected the pictures in each box and I attached them using double-sided foam tape so that they would be easy to change out. I thrifted this throw blanket for $1.99 and decided to repurpose it as a tree skirt. I folded the blanket into fourths and then pinned a small strand of twine to the center corner. I attached a piece of chalk to the opposite end 
and drew an arc-shaped line to cut along. There was a little stitching within my circle connecting the front and back fabrics, which I was able to rip out with a seam ripper in less than five minutes. I used a tape measure to determine the center of my circle, and then I used a Tupperware bowl to draw a small circle in the center. I also drew a straight line from the outer edge of the fabric to that center circle, and then I cut that line, and I also cut out that center circle. With the pretty front sides of the fabric facing each other, I stitched up all of the edges on my sewing machine, but you could close the edges with hot glue instead. Be sure to leave a small opening large enough for your hand to fit through so that you can turn the fabric right side out. And then stitch or hot glue that hole closed. Because this creates a very full skirt, you don't need to sew on any ties. Just overlap one end of the fabric over the other to create a custom fit for your tree. To make use of the leftover fabric, I decided to make a pair of red velvet mittens. I drew out a mitten shape on a piece of paper and then used that paper as my pattern to cut out my fabric. With the velvety sides of fabric facing each other, I stitched up the edges, leaving the top of the mitten open. Then I turned the mittens right side out. Next, I cut a strip of the fake fur long enough to go around the top of the mitten. With the fake fur facing the velvet fabric, I hot glued the strip of fur along the open end of the mitten and then hot glued the two ends of fake fur together. I flipped the fur up and then folded the top edge to the inside and hot glued it down. I put a little pillow stuffing in each mitten to give it some shape. I thought I might want to hang these mittens in the future, so I punched a hole through the fake fur with an X-Acto knife and then ran some twine through it to create a loop that I could hang it from. Then to dress up the mittens, I added a few stems of greenery and a large bow. When I thrifted this popcorn bowl, I thought I would use it as a base for a small Christmas tree, but then I took it in a completely different direction. I sanded off the red paint and gave it a coat of green chalk paint. When the paint was dry, I lightly distressed it with fine grit sandpaper and then applied a light coat of Waverly Clear Wax. I had some birch wood scrapbook paper left over from a previous project and I cut it to fit the bottom of the popcorn bowl. I sprayed the bottom of the bowl with some adhesive and then pressed in the paper. I had to splice two pieces together because I didn't have one piece that was large enough. I wanted the bottom of the bowl to look nice because I was going to prop it on its side on a chair in my kitchen. Then I just added decor items that I had on hand, like a wicker birdhouse, some branches cut off an old fake Christmas tree, pine cones from my yard, and a string of beads made from a wood beaded seat cover. I sprinkled on a little fake snow and then I added a small string of fairy lights inside the birdhouse. I recently thrifted a bag of alphabet blocks, and I'm going to use one to create a Christmas ornament to commemorate the birth of a new baby, but you could easily adapt this idea for other occasions and purposes. Using my orbital sander, I sanded all but the letter side smooth. 
Then I printed out the baby's birth information on colorful backgrounds to fit the sides of the block. You can print out my colorful paper designs or just print the baby's stats on some pretty scrapbook paper. Because the freshly sanded block will soak up the Mod Podge, apply Mod Podge to both the back of the paper and to the block before adhering them together. Cut off any extra paper along the edges and let the Mod Podge dry. Once it's dry, use some fine grit sandpaper to distress all of the edges. Then apply a top coat of Mod Podge to seal and protect the paper. Drill a small hole in the top center of the block and screw in an eye hook. Run some twine or ribbon through the hook to create a hanger. I'm always on the lookout for small wood picture frames at the thrift store. To turn them into ornaments, I spray painted mine with black spray paint and then lightly distress them with sandpaper. Then print out some sheet music from some of your favorite Christmas carols or hymns in a tiny size to fit your frames. Return the cardboard back, tearing off the stand if there is one. And because you may be able to see the back of the frame when it's hanging in your Christmas tree, I suggest covering the back side with a pretty piece of scrapbook paper or an old Christmas card image. You can just use glue stick to adhere the image to the back of the frame. To create a hanger for the frame, drill a small hole in the top center and then screw in a small eye hook. You can then attach a hook or a small ribbon to the eye hook. Embellish the frame if you like. I think a few sprigs of greenery and some berries and a little bow look very nice. For the next project, you'll want to thrift a book with preferably a red or green cover. You can remove the title printed on the spine by rubbing over it with some goof off. Print out two Christmas images the same size as the book pages. I chose vintage images from the book A Visit from St. Nicholas. Open the book to the center and decoupage your paper images over both pages. Because you're gluing paper to paper, only apply a light coat of Mod Podge to the back of the printed images. Put something heavy on the pages, like books, to weigh both sides down so the pages don't curl up as the glue dries. Once the glue was dry, I began creating a square hole in the center of one of the pages. I used a metal ruler so that I would cut straight lines with my X-Acto knife, and I just kept going over my cut lines and removing the squares of paper until I had created a good sized hole. To hold the edges together, I applied hot glue along the sides of the hole. Then I was ready to add a Santa ornament and some bottle brush trees to the hole. I filled in around them with Mod Podge and sprinkled on fake snow. I think this 3D book makes adorable tabletop decor. I thought I could turn this large piece of outdated wall art into unique Christmas decor. First, I removed the paper backing and pried up the staples holding the art in place. Then I removed the art and the sheet of glass because I wanted to repaint the frame with some dark brown chalk paint to match the brown mat. When the paint was dry, I lightly distressed it with sandpaper to bring out some of the gold paint underneath. Then I applied antiquing wax to give the brown paint some extra dimension. I printed out some winter botanical images on cardstock 
to fit the squares on the mat. I used a paper cutter to cut them out because I wanted to make sure the edges were perfectly straight. I chose to attach the paper images to the mat using glue stick because Mod Podge tends to make cardstock bubble. Unfortunately, when I went to reassemble the artwork in the frame, I broke the glass. So I just reattached the artwork without the glass. I cleaned up the back of the frame by adhering some brown craft paper to the frame using glue stick. Without glass, I needed to apply Mod Podge to protect the paper images. So I applied a very thin coat and crossed my fingers that the cardstock wouldn't bubble. One of my favorite upcycling projects is taking old, worn, or ugly thrift store decor and giving it a refresh. Because the paint on this snowman was pretty scratched up, I started by repainting his mittens and earmuffs in a softer green, and then I repainted his hat with some black chalk paint. I painted the scarf and the holly leaves around the bottom white to make them disappear, because I was planning on covering those things up completely. I made a scarf from a scrap of fabric and then hot glued it over the ceramic scarf. Then I hot glued another thin strip of fabric over the band on his hat. Rather than adding a candle, I hot glued a small bird's nest in his mittens. And then I cut up some greenery stems from Dollar Tree to cover up the ceramic leaves around the base. I applied spray adhesive to the entire snowman and covered him with iridescent glitter. I also added a little bird and a little pine cone and a tiny bit of greenery in the nest. For the next project, I used an old grapevine wreath that had definitely seen better days. I removed all of the flowers and its bow, and then I sprayed it down with some silk plant cleaner to remove all of the dust. And then I just went out to my yard and clipped whatever I could find. I started by covering the wreath with holly clippings, which I just stuck into the grapevine. Then I added what I'll call spiky balls. I just evenly spaced them around the wreath. Again, I used no hot glue. I just stuck them into the grapevine wreath. I went around the wreath again, this time adding dead boxwood stems. Then I went around the wreath again, this time adding in what I'll call fluffy stems. Then I added some pine cones, which were the only elements that were actually wired to the wreath. I thoroughly sprayed the wreath with hairspray to reduce shedding, and I added a bow. I hope you'll try to make a wreath with whatever you can find in your yard or neighborhood. With a few embellishments, you can turn almost anything into Christmas decor, like this old metal chicken. I spray painted him white and then made a small wreath from a pine branch, added a bow and a miniature ornament from Walmart, and voila, Christmas chicken. I think this wood angel was someone else's old DIY project. My first job was to remove the dusty dried flowers in Spanish moss. There was a lot of hot glue under that moss, so I had to use a razor blade to scrape all of it off. I wanted to embrace the angel's primitive style 
So I hunted through my stash of embellishments and found some scrap fretwork that I attached to her wings with Gorilla Glue. I also found a rusty star, a random piece of decorative metal, and a wood curtain ring that I plan to use for a halo. To make the curtain ring and the piece of metal look rusty like the star, I used Modern Masters Metal Effects. You brush on two coats of the brown primer, followed by two coats of the iron paint, and then finally you spray on two light coats of the rust activator. The pieces will continue to rust for a couple hours as they dry. Next, I printed out two copies of the sheet music for Hark the Herald Angels Sing, and for an authentic vintage appearance, I printed the sheet music on blank pages that I tore from an old book. I also tore the paper edges for a more primitive appearance and adhered them to the angel's skirt with Mod Podge. When the Mod Podge was dry, I brushed on another coat of Mod Podge over the top to seal and protect the paper. And then once that top coat was dry, I used an X-Acto knife to trim off the extra paper and then lightly sanded the edges smooth. Because the paint was scratched up in several spots, I gave the wood a fresh coat of off-white chalk paint. When the chalk paint was dry, I lightly distressed the wood edges with sandpaper. I also painted the wood circle or halo behind the angel's head with a light yellow colored chalk paint. Once the paint was dry, I was ready to attach my rusty colored embellishments. I glued the metal piece to the angel's chest with Gorilla Glue, but I changed my mind about using the curtain ring as a halo. Instead, I wrapped a heavy piece of wire around a can, twisting the ends together to create a circle. Then I drilled a little hole above the angel's head and inserted the ends of the wire through the hole and spread them flat on the back to hold it in place. Finally, I drilled a small hole in the bottom of one of the pieces of fretwork and ran a strand of twine through the hole to hang the rusty star. To turn this thrift store clock into Christmas decor, I removed the back of the clock and the clock face, but the glass was attached. I painted both the inside and the outside of the wood frame with some black latex paint that I had on hand. I gave it two coats of paint, and when the paint was dry, I used a utility knife to scrape off any paint that had gotten on the glass. Then I used my Cricut machine to cut out a Christmas landscape silhouette from a piece of black poster board. If you don't have a cutting machine, you could print out the black silhouette on a piece of white cardstock to get a similar effect. I carefully removed the battery pack and the clock hands from the clock face and set them aside for some future project. To cover the clock face, I cut a circle from a piece of white foam board, but a piece of poster board would have worked too. I used glue stick on the back of the Christmas silhouette to adhere it to the foam board. The reason I didn't use vinyl was because I was afraid the transfer paper would pull up pieces of the foam board when I pulled it off. I should have cut a deeper bottom edge to the Christmas silhouette to cover the bottom half of the clock face, so it was necessary to cut a piece of black poster board to cover that space. Then I sprayed the scene with some adhesive spray and sprinkled on iridescent glitter. Of course, you can skip this step if you're not a fan of glitter. Then I poured in enough fake snow into the clock frame to cover the bottom portion of the Christmas scene. To put the clock back together, I first put in the foam board and then the clock face, and finally I reattached the back piece of the clock. Well, we did it. 
30 upcycling projects in under an hour. And I'd love to know which one was your favorite. Thank you so much for watching today. Hope to see you next week. Thank you.